Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Saya Muhammad Anwar daripada Temerlo. Okey, ingin saya memohon dan saya ingin memohon penerangan ustaz cara mendalam tentang Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dan arak di mana pak syiah jangankan meminum arak adalah sunnah. Uh, serta bagaimana untuk menjaga dawaan ini. Okey, sekian. Tuan dan puan sekalian. Nabi kita sallallahu alaihi wasallam tidak pernah meminum arak dan tidak ada hadis yang menunjukkan bahawa sebenarnya Nabi meminum arak. Cuma di dalam al-Quran tiga ayat yang saya katakan tadi, ayat kontroversi pada ketika itu dibahaskan oleh para ulama. Ada kata ayat ini ayat yang ketiga tadi ni yang mengatakan arak adalah perkara jijik dan ia merupakan amalan syaitan, kamu kena jauhkan. Ia merupakan ayat yang membatalkan hukum ayat yang dua sebelumnya yang dibacakan tadi iaitu arak adanya manfaat adanya dosa kemudian jauhilah uh, uh, salat ketika mana kamu dalam keadaan yang memabukkan sehingga kamu sedar apa yang kamu katakan baru salat ia memasukkan semua hukum tersebut buktinya kita petik daripada hadis Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam turunnya ayat ini menyebabkan kendi-kendi dipecahkan kendi-kendi arak dipecahkan dalam seluruh bandar Madinah tuan-tuan kita kena bila kita berhadapan dengan puak syiah kita ada satu masalah besar ada banyak tapi antara yang paling besar adalah isu sumber agama. Karena Syiah dia ada sumber dia sendiri. Dia menolak hadis-hadis yang kita pakai Bukhari. Imam Bukhari dia kafir kan dan Imam Bukhari tahu apa tidak? Imam Bukhari mati dalam buangan. Imam Bukhari mati dalam keadaan dibuang daripada negerinya. Dituduh Al Imam Bukhari rahimahullah sebagai nasibi. Nasibi iaitu orang yang anti dan benci kepada kaum keluarga Nabi. Dituduh Al Imam Bukhari. Nampak? Jadi dia tak terima Bukhari Cuma ada baru-baru ni saja Saya pun terkejut bila saya tengok dalam Youtube baru-baru ni Ada seorang syiah daripada Jordan Daripada negara Syam sana Bila dia mengeluarkan dakwaan dia kata Aku memeluk syiah kerana aku membaca Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abi Daud, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sunan Nasai, Sunan Ibn Majah, Musa Ahmad, Muwatta Malik, Sahih Ibn Hibban, Sahih Ibn Khuzaimah, Mustadrab Al-Hakim dan kitab-kitab hadis yang lain ini semua kitab hadis ahli sunnah. Dia kata aku peluk syiah pasal aku baca kitab ni. Ini ini baru mereka nak mereka nak cuba putar alam ni. Nak cuba mem, uh, mengelirukan umat Islam secara keseluruhannya. Padahal asasnya Al-Kulaini imam mereka, Al-Khumaini imam mereka menolak semua kitab-kitab hadis yang ahli sunnah pakai. Depa guna kalau hadis kitab hadis mereka yang paling mu'tabar kitab hadis Al-Ghadir dan juga kitab hadis usulul kafi oleh al-kulaini kitab hadis itu semua disandarkan kepada Ja'far as-sadiq sehingga kan hadis tentang al-Quran yang berada di sisi kita tak lengkap Quran yang lengkap adalah Quran mereka mushaf fatimah iaitu 17 ribu ayat bererti Quran kita ini hanya sepertiga saja daripada Quran mereka sesungguhnya imam-imam mereka maksum bebas daripada salah dan silap dosa dan sebagainya Tuan-tuan, lebih dekat kepada Allah berbanding dengan Nabi yang diutuskan, Rasul yang diutuskan dan malaikat yang dekat dengan Allah. Imam mereka lebih dekat dengan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Tu dia cerita mereka. Jadi sumber mereka lain berbeza dengan kita. Jadi bila kita dia berkata, ya dalam Al Quran kata lagu itu, tapi dalam ni tengok ada dalam hadis Nabi, ada dalam hadis Jaafar As Sadiq yang mana Nabi sebut ini hadis Alul Bait. Mereka mempermainkan dan memperbodohkan kita dengan nama alul bait kaum keluarga nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sedangkan orang yang paling mencintai alul bait kaum keluarga nabi adalah ahli sunnah wal jamaah kerana kita mencintai alul bait seperti mana yang nabi ajar kita tidak keterlaluan dan kita tidak terlalu meremeh-temehkan kita yang sedang-sedang kita yang sederhana jadi macam isu tadi di dalam kitab-kitab ahli sunnah semuanya dah ada cuma mereka menafikan sumber rujukan mereka tetapi mereka tak lawan dengan kita tahu apa siapa Pasti kita ada sanat Sanat tu apa? Sanat itu susur galur periwayatan Sam, Daripada seorang imam Sampai kepada Nabi Imam ni ambil daripada siapa? Ambil Tok Guru dia Tok Guru dia ambil daripada siapa? Si Fulan, si Fulan, si Fulan Sampai ke sahabat Nabi, sampai kepada Nabi Setiap orang ini Daripada kalangan mereka yang disebut Di dalam rantaian ini Dikenali mereka Siapa mereka Di mana mereka dilahirkan Tahun berapa mereka lahir Tahun berapa mereka mati Siapa anak murid mereka Siapa tok guru mereka Berapa hadis yang mereka petik Daripada negeri yang mereka masuk Daripada negeri contoh Baghdad Daripada Syam 
semua detail diketahui ini ilmu hadis dahsyat tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian jadi syiah bila melawan dalam bab ni dia akan tewas kerana dia tidak ada sanad sanadnya adalah terdiri daripada pemalsu-pemalsu hadis yang telah dikenal pasti di sisi ahlu sunnati wal jamaah termasuk isu yang disebutkan tadi wallahu alam Seorang pengikut aliran sesat Syiah mencoba melawan fatwa MUI. Di saat Majelis Ulama Indonesia MUI gencar memberikan pemahaman umat dan mengeluarkan buku tentang kesesatan Syiah, tiba-tiba muncul buku mensesatkan MUI. Buku berjudul Apakah MUI Sesat? Berdasarkan 10 kriteria aliran sesat, itu ditulis oleh Emilia Mita Az. Istri Ketua Dewan Syuro Ikatan Jamaah Ahlul Bait Indonesia, Ijabi, Jalaluddin Rahmat. Ketika dihubungi hidayatullah.com melalui sambungan telepon, Emilio mengakui bukunya itu sebagai jawaban atas buku yang telah dikeluarkan tim MUI Pusat berjudul Mengenal dan Mewaspadai Penyimpangan Syiah di Indonesia. Syiah memang keras kepala dan tak tahu diri. Assalamualaikum Syekh I really need your opinion on this um, The Jajah has come up with so many tools to disalign the world Muslim and one of the tools are riba and instigation all over the world but I believe food is also we eat food every day and we eat we need to read to eat clean food I want to know how bad Monsanto of America going global and even into Malaysia with its GMO food. Thank you. That's my question. <coughs> yes, there is a hint of this in Surat al kaf that food is going to be a problem in Akhir Zaman. Remember, the young man slept for 300 years when you wake up after 300 years you're going to be hungry so they sent one to get some food and they gave him instruction for yanzur ayyuha azka ta'am go search for that food which is purest that is what we have to do today food today is increasingly corrupted and contaminated and your baby for the sisters here, my daughters here, be careful. If you provide your babies with the milk that they have corrupted and contaminated with hormone injections, then a baby boy will grow up feminine. It's not that Allah created him that way. I have a case now in KL the mother is spending so much money, she doesn't know what to do. Little boy is behaving like a girl. He has all the mannerisms of a girl, he's talking like a girl. Huh? It's hell for the mother. And the baby girl will grow up like a tomboy. Hmm? And you don't know what to do with this girl. She's not growing up like a girl, she's growing up like a boy. She's behaving like a boy. And you, the mother, you have the problem more than the father. He's outside working all day. So you got to be very careful about food because they're putting into the food that is going to contaminate and corrupt the food and create problems for you tomorrow. Hmm? That was the question on food. But if I may be allowed to take on one more subject about the Dajjal. It's not going to make me popular. But I'm not here for popularity. <laughs> In the Quran, Allah is plain and clear. Allah is plain and clear in the Quran that he created men to have several wives. Oh yes. He created men to have several wives. 
And the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is to have several wives. And so to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And if men are to have several wives, it follows that Allah must have created more women than men. You cannot have men having several wives and yet create the same amount of men as women. So forget about the official statistics. Forget about it. There will always be more women than men in the world. Hmm? <coughs> The Jal it is who has come along. And when you study Ilmu Akhir Zaman, then you will understand the strategy. And brainwashed, all of us, including the scholars of Islam, brainwashed us all. That good men, decent men, respectable men, men who are models of conduct, are men who have only one wife. And when a man takes a second or a third wife, like your grandfather did and your great-grandfather did, something is wrong with him. You despise him. You don't want to marry a man who already has a wife. No. People are going to laugh at you to be a second wife. Hmm? This is the attack of Dajjal. This is the attack of Dajjal. And so, if you are to earn Allah's blessings, you must stand up and defy the job. If you have the means to do so and you can take a second wife, go ahead and do it. Imran Hussein is speaking. Go ahead and do it. But if you cannot be a good husband to your first wife, you cannot be a good husband to your second. No. First be a good husband to your first wife. Then you can be a good husband to the second and the third. You don't have to be rich to have several wives. No. In many parts of the world today, there are poor people in the villages who have several wives. But it is something pleasing to Allah when you act in accordance with Allah's guidance. This is part of the strategy of the job. So as men have only one wife, only one wife. There will always be a surplus of women out there who cannot find a husband. That's a recipe for disaster. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. <laughs> so, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdul Hadi. My question is a very short one. My question is, uh, what is your view on Iran? Are they our ally in this Akhir Zaman? Uh, that's all. Thank you. My view of jihad? On Iran, Iran. <coughs> um, I am about to deliver a lecture on the subject. The master plan, the Jazz master plan for Akhir Zaman is to bring about Shia Sunni civil war in Islam. They tried it when Saddam Hussein attacked Iran. And the war lasted for eight years. They were hoping that it would become a Shia Sunni civil war in Islam, but it did not. They tried it again in Syria to make it a Shia Sunni war in Syria. They didn't succeed. And now they're trying it with ISIS to get Shia Sunni civil war in Islam. Hmm? If they succeed in fomenting Shia Sunni civil war in Islam, goodbye Pakistan. Goodbye to Pakistan. Pakistan cannot survive. They want Pakistan to collapse because Pakistan is the only Muslim country today with nuclear weapons. And uh, in order to avoid a frontal attack on Pakistan and nuclear war, it would be better if they can get Pakistan to collapse from, from inside with civil war. Hmm? <coughs> 
So the Protestant Islam, the Salafi view, is today to beat the drums of war against the Shia. That's what they're doing. Beating the drums of war against the Shia. This is why I travel to Iran again and again. To try to build solidarity with the Shia ulama. And I was just in Iran three weeks ago. And I said, we've got to sit down and come to some common understanding. To inform the Sunni world that you cannot say that the Shia are kuffar. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. That's schoolboy methodology. That Shia are kuffar. In order for you to say that they are kuffar, you have to declare a fatwa. The fatwa has to be issued by someone of authority, someone with knowledge. And it has to be a document. And that document has to get ijma, consensus. That has never happened in history. No. And no one has ever prevented the Shia from performing the Hajj. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. How come no one in the history of Islam have prevented the Shia from performing the Hajj? How do you explain that? No Ishma. And now you come to tell Imran Hussein they're kuffar. That's schoolboy stuff. That's not scholarship. So we have to get this into the head of the Sunni. That the Shia, the Isna Ashari, they are Muslims. And we also have to get it into the heads of the Shia. That the Quran is the supreme authority in Islam, not the Hadith, the Quran. You cannot divide the Ummah based on Hadith. No. Is there anything in the Quran which states plainly and clearly that succession to leadership in Islam is divinely ordained and restricted to the house of the Prophet? No. The Quran does not establish that. That's from the Hadith, not the Quran. And you cannot establish a belief system only on the Hadith. It has to be supported by the Quran. And so you should stop. Stop it. Stop ever saying that Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar Farooq and Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhum that they were usurpers. That is a sinful thing to do. That's nonsense. It's false. Stop it. You cannot establish a belief system based on hadith, unsupported by the Quran. So we've got to bridge the divide, the Shia Sunni divide on these two issues. And hopefully I pray that Allah may help us that we can prevent Shia Sunni civil war in this.